Hello and welcome to BDSM Explained. In this episode of our BDSM 101, we're going to be looking at vetting. So vetting is what you do with a, a potential new partner, playmate, well anyone really that you're looking to get involved with. Vetting is basically, unless you didn't know what it means, it is investigating um, someone to ensure they are suitable for the, the role that you've got in mind. So whether that's you're looking for a new dom, so you're looking for a new dominant, and you will be vetting them obviously to make sure that they suit the needs that you have as a submissive or obviously vice versa you're a dominant looking for a submissive and you're looking for that one that will fit the criteria that you have whether you're looking for a, a little or a middle or a brat or you're looking for a rope bunny any kind of particular submissive you obviously have a little checklist in your mind which you would go through that as you're, you're vetting someone so a couple of things that we're going to look at obviously in this short video is possible red flags that, that might obviously indicate that that's not the person for you and maybe some things that you can do to alleviate them them red flags as well so a couple of things that might come up as a, a potential warning or might give you an indication that they might not be the right person is for example say if you're talking to them and they they're not really interested in you so they they're more they're not wanting to know for example like your your family like if you've got brothers sisters where you live, things like that. They're just more interested in um, things of like a sexual nature and keeping it lifestyle related straight away. They're not wanting to get to know you as a person before getting to know you as a submissive or dominant, obviously, again, depending on the role you're looking for. If as well, if you're talking and they, they seem to communicate at odd hours, so yes, that could be like for myself, I'm in the UK, so if I'm text, if I'm messaging a friend, there's a time difference if they're in a different country, that's understandable. But if you're in the same country and you message them at 9 o'clock and then they don't reply until like 3.30 in the morning, then obviously if that's all they're ever going to reply, that's, they're obviously communicating during odd hours for some type of reason. That might be a potential warning sign. Whether that reason's obviously work or family, if there's, there's members of the, their family or relationship that they're not wanting to people that know about, so they're communicating at odd hours maybe it's when people are asleep also it could be if they when you're communicating whether that's via facebook or fetlife or dating application whatever and immediately they're asking for a telephone number <laughs> yeah maybe she might be willing to give that out straight away but it could also be a potential warning sign that they're just wanting to get your contact number straight away if they're maybe also asking for you to you need to send a picture to them before they'll continue the conversation so they're, they're requesting you send something, um, but not giving anything in return. So maybe as if they're saying, oh, send me, a, send me a selfie and they send you one back so you can see what each other looks like. That's completely different to send me a picture, otherwise I'm not going to continue this conversation. That's kind of blackmailing you into giving something before they'll continue on. Also, what it could be as well as obviously you in the lifestyle, as well as your normal relationships, you, people give each other pet names, but that's usually once they get to know them, because then they give them a pet name that suits. So, it, if they're going to give you that off the bat, so you just start speaking, hi, how are you? And they're like, oh, I'm good, how are you, baby? Or, how are you, babe? And they, they're giving you, like, pet names straight away. That might, again, be an indication of a, a warning sign that they might not be the partner for you because they're not getting to know you and giving you something that suits yourself. Obviously, if you're going down a, a sexual route as well, it could be if you're meeting up and they don't want to use or wear protection. Again, that could be dependent on your personal choices. Again, another red flag could be that they're not willing to use protection, so they're not, they're not bothered about the risks of not using protection, so they may not follow... Practices within the lifestyle, like safe, sane, and consensual, consensual things like that. Also, if there's a lack of mutual communication, so if you send a lot of messages, so you're trying to have a conversation and they're only just requesting things from you or they're just saying a couple of words at a time, it's not a conversation, it's not flowing two ways. If it's a one way conversation, again, that could be another sign of maybe he's letting that one go and try and find someone else. Because you're always looking for that that person you connect with, that person that you can make that connection and make them conversations with. 
Personally, what I find in this lifestyle is a lot of people are very open and honest, straight up front about what they're looking for. So when I was looking for a, a partner, I didn't hide my submissive side, which is from any of the videos you may have seen or if you're in our Facebook group, you'll see is Sophia, who is a, a cross-dressing um, submissive brat middle um, and a few other lovely little names that Mistress Kelly gives me. But that's beside the point. I was very upfront about that side of me because in a previous relationship I had hid that side of me and my partner didn't um, like that side. So it meant that that part of me wasn't getting what it desired and required. So therefore when I started looking for a partner due to that relationship ending, I was vetting people and making them well aware of what my likes were to make sure that they liked them as well. And if they didn't, I just simply moved on to find somebody else. Obviously now I've found my partner um, and mistress and we, we fit very well together. But that's not without doing some kind of research and having a lot of communication between each other. So again, with that as well, it could be that they, when you ask them each for the first time, they're not willing to meet in a public place. They want it to be very private. Again, this could be a, a warning sign that they they don't want to be seen out in public with somebody else, or they then they've got alternative motives and they're trying to meet in a private location. So again, they can get what they want, not what you necessarily want. Always best, I would suggest, to maybe meet in a public place first, so that if anything goes sideways, obviously not saying it will, but if it did. You've got a lot of public, um, play, you're in a public place, so there's a lot of people around that can then help if needed, or you've got a way of getting out of that situation straight away. If you're always talking and they're going back to bring them back to sex or back to trying to have kinkiness to it straight away, or if they're, if they're trying to imply rules straight away as well, could be another another thing. That would maybe give you a, a bit of a red flag there that yes give boundaries and expectations but try and put rules in place when you've not really spoke to each other you don't know how your dynamics going to work um and if, for example they may put rules in like trying to insist that you don't speak to anybody else um that you communicate with them so many times a day things like that but again this is things that would come in time so rules would come further down the line once you've got to know each other and you've got an idea of maybe where this dynamic or relationship is going. Also pushing for a scene straight away within the first meet or two, that could have then again maybe give you an idea that they might be inexperienced or they're a little bit risk a little bit too risky in there wanting to push for a scene straight away. That could be that obviously that they're in dom space or subspace depending on obviously their role so it could be that they've maybe experienced something and they want to experience it straight away so they'll push to try and get a scene but scenes are very complicated they're not a one bang thank you mom kind of thing they're not like you turn up you do something and you go the scene is something that's planned it, it takes some time to get everything the way that, every, that both parties want so it could be that obviously you're talking about boundaries, things like safe words as well. If the person isn't wanting to use a safe word or doesn't really know what a safe word is, could be another flag of their inexperience or that again, they're not really into the lifestyle. They're just looking for something with a bit of difference from vanilla. So they, they don't know the ins and outs of the lifestyle in terms of safe words, obviously there for everyone's safety aftercare as well if they're not really into aftercare not everybody is but if they don't know what it is or they're not willing to give you aftercare if you are again could be red flags i mean ways of combating it again it is obviously inventing the person and doing checks maybe as if you've got their social media have a look see what they're like on there talking to them having a lot of communication before you make that initial meet Things as well, if someone's been in the lifestyle for quite a while, then you can ask for things like a character reference, which would come from a potential part, ex-partner they've had, or it could be other people that they've known that can give that kind of reference to say what type of person they are. Maybe it's also asking about what their goals are and what their wants and desires are. 
what do they see of the relationship or dynamic? If they're not really willing to discuss that, then again, this could be a potential red flag. And a way of obviously avoiding these is if you know what their goal is, how do they maybe maintain things like self-discipline? Um, have they had partners in the lifestyle before? Are they new? These simple questions could make life a lot easier for you while you're going through that vetting process. And remember, at the end of the day, always trust your gut. It is normally correct. So if you feel something is not right with the person you're speaking to, that might that is really the biggest indication because you will deep down know something's not right. You might not be able to put your finger on it. However, I would suggest you move on and find somebody else. There's plenty of people out there. And as I said, the people within the lifestyle are normally the most honest and upfront people straight off the bat because they are looking for someone that meets what they want. They don't want to go around the houses to find it out unless obviously they're just new to the lifestyle and they're a little bit shy. That's understandable, but you work together in that conversation while going through that vetting process. Hope this has helped. As always, until next time, stay kinky.